Hey, what is up guys, I'm KBHD here, and I recently did a top five 1080p smartphones video. And this device ended at number one, so it took the crown for best 1080p smartphone. And I've also been tweeting about and talking about this phone a lot, and this is it. This is time to give it the full review treatment. This is the review of the HTC One. So the One is a really interesting phone this year for a couple of reasons. Number one, this is HTC's main flagship, so it seems like it's their last hope, and this is a bit of a must-win phone for them. And number two, it's competing directly against Samsung's flagship, the Galaxy S4, for sales. And that's interesting because HTC actually took some serious risks with this phone that you don't usually really see in other phones, and some of them you already know what I'm talking about already, but we'll get to those in a second. But initially, picking up this phone and holding it is a pretty nice experience, which is pretty obvious. It's an all-metal unibody aluminum back design, which kind of wraps around to the front. It's definitely not the thinnest phone in the world, and it's also definitely not the lightest phone in the world either, but it feels rather sturdily built, and that's always a good thing. In fact, this is probably one of the best things about this phone, how hefty it feels in the hand, it feels really good, and how well everything fits together with that back piece of metal. Now, some people have had small gaps appear between the layers of the phone, and sometimes it's worse than others, but my phone, my HTC One, feels pretty much perfect, so that's always good. The one thing about the outside hardware of the HTC One that I don't like is the button placement, mostly the power button placement. So the power button is up at the top left hand corner, which is a little bit awkward, but if you hold your phone with your left hand, you can get to it. And if you hold your phone with your right hand, you can get to it. But I'm just so used to tapping that right hand side for power like I did on, you know, Samsung and Motorola devices that it kind of gets me, it throws me off a little bit. And there are no buttons on the left hand side of the phone. There's just this SIM card tray. And on the right hand side is your volume rocker, no power button. And speaking of all the placement, I guess we'll go over at the top is also your three and a half millimeter headphone jack. And at the bottom is your USB port. And then at the front, you have some awesome, awesome design features going on here. And, and then some other not so awesome ones. But first of all, you have a 4.7 inch 1080p display coming in at just shy of 470 pixels per inch. It is an extremely, extremely nice display. Then down at the bottom, you have your HTC logo and just two buttons, capacitive buttons, your home button and your back button. And you also have your boom sound front facing speakers, uh, which we'll also talk about in a second. There's also a wide angle front facing camera and uh, the holes for the boom sound speakers are micro drilled. They're really, really high quality. They look pretty good. And there's also a notification light up top. So overall the front, I like the design of this phone. It's a kind of a two-tone design, which is you know a mixed bag. Some people don't like it because it looks like an iPhone, but honestly, I think it has a pretty unique appeal of its own. On the back, of course, you also have that band. The plastic bands are where the antenna signals will go through. That's where NFC will happen. That's where your radios and Bluetooth and everything will go through basically. You can't go through the metal. And then you also have your four ultra pixel camera and your flash and you have your AT&T logo for this model and Beats Audio, <laughs> which is, you know, it's there. Actually, you know what? Let's talk about that. Let's talk about that Beats Audio. In fact, I'll probably do a separate video covering literally everything about Beats Audio and phones, but you don't really need to know it now. All you need to know is that this phone's front facing speakers are amazing. They're incredible. HTC calls it boom sound. I call it awesome sound, whatever you want to call it. It's a wonder nobody's thought to do this in a smartphone before and execute it this well like HTC. And not only are they front facing, they're also stereo speakers. So if you're watching a movie or playing a racing game or something, you can actually hear things move across the screen from one speaker to the other. It's absolutely awesome. And on top of all of that, on top of being front facing and stereo, they're insanely great quality drivers too. More lows, more mids, more highs, more details. Just go ahead and listen to this comparison with the Galaxy S4 and judge for yourself. There you go, actions speak louder than words here. And these speakers combined with probably the best smartphone display on any phone I've ever used, period, make it probably the best media consumption experience that I've had in my pocket. And that is a huge reason to buy this phone by itself. Now, in terms of media creation though, this camera is a pretty big deal. Uh, and the camera on the HTC One is actually not bad. It's not bad at all. Now, I did a video explaining the whole ultra pixel deal, so I'll leave that link right below the like button on this video if you wanna check that out. But basically, the phone takes decent pictures and regular light and outstanding pictures and video 
in low light. So if you care about low light, then this is probably the best phone camera for you next to the Lumia 920. This problem here is that because this is only a four megapixel camera and not 13, there's not as much detail. And when you're zooming in, there's not quite as much sharpness. So HTC decided they're gonna go ahead and add some sharpening in software to make the pictures appear as sharp as a 13 megapixel shot. This works pretty well for the most part until you can actually tell, like when something's supposed to be blurry and out of focus and smooth in the background, the software tries to sharpen it up and gives it this weird look. Otherwise though, the camera and the optics are pretty great and the software behind it has plenty of neat features. There's things like HDR shot and burst shot and things called HTC Zoe, which basically gives you a few seconds of video on like command basically really quickly. It's pretty great. It's also worth mentioning that the crop on this phone is way wider. There's a way wider angle lens on the back and the front so you can get way more in the shot, which is pretty nice. And it's also worth pointing out that there is tap to focus and tap to meter. So if you're metering for exposure, if you tap a dark area, it's going to blow up the photo and it'll be really, really light. But if you tap a white area, it'll get really, really dark. So you have to find the right area of the photo to tap to get the right exposure, unless you trust the auto exposure. Now inside the beast, running everything is a 1.7 gigahertz Qualcomm Snapdragon 600 CPU. Excellent processor, never a doubt. Uh, and this thing crushes, crushes benchmarks just like on the Galaxy S4 as we expected, but I kind of would have liked to see it matched up to the Galaxy S4 at 1.9 gigahertz. I don't know why, it's just something about me was wishing they didn't clock it down as much. But then again, that's probably going towards saving battery. The fact is this is a 2300 milliamp hour battery, so it's not quite as big, but it lasts as long as the Galaxy S4's 2600 milliamp hour battery because of the slightly lower CPU clock speed, the slightly slower DDR2 RAM instead of DDR3, the slightly smaller display, and a few other things in software, but it lasts me basically a full day of heavy use from 7 a.m. to about 8 p.m., no problem. But would you really want to use this phone all day? <laughs> it's a pleasing experience or not? Uh, to be honest, yes, it, it definitely is. It's much better than previous HTC phone experiences. The HTC One is running the newest version of Sense UI called Sense 5 on top of Android 4.1.2 Jellybean. We'll probably see some update to 4.2 pretty soon. And this phone is fast. I mean, actually, uh, take that back. I think quick is the better word. It's a really quick and responsive phone. It's very snappy, that's another good word. I love everything about using it. I've never feel any sort of stutter or hiccup or anything. This thing flies through multitasking. Performance is great, I never run out of RAM. There's two gigabytes of RAM and it's just an awesome experience using this phone. The only delay I ever feel is when I sometimes mispress that capacitive home button or try to double tap and accidentally get a single tap, and it's kind of wonky. I end up doing this a lot actually because in Sense UI, a double tap of the home button brings you into multitasking, a single tap of the home button brings you home, and then a long press of the home button brings you to Google Now. So there's a few actions you kind of have to know with the home button, uh, but after a while you get used to it. I've also accidentally pressed the HTC logo by default to try to wake up the phone. That's how long I was using the Galaxy Note 2. Uh, even though the keyboard, though, the keyboard is another thing that is extra snappy, I'm finding that the autocorrect is also phenomenal. I actually think this is probably the best keyboard on any smartphone I've ever used. So that's another huge win for HTC. This keyboard is really, really good, very fast, uh, just for regular typing. And it's also big enough for my pretty big fingers. And then there's also swiping. So you can use this keyboard uh, over the stock Android keyboard. I've actually found that I use it a lot more. But speaking of stock Android, this is a double-edged sword. There are a couple of things that are weird, really weird about Sense 5. For me, number one is Blink Feed. I don't really use Blink Feed. I guess I can understand why people would want it. Uh, it's kind of customizable, so you can add your own sources and everything. So that's nice, but uh, I would like to be able to completely remove it from my home screen and not accidentally see it every time I swipe left. Number two is the app drawer and the dock are one. They are the same thing. They're part of the same thing. It's really weird. So you know how you get something out of the dock, you should just be able to drag it out and put it somewhere else, right? Wrong. You just dragged a shortcut out of the app drawer too because the dock is part of the app drawer. So of course it duplicates it and replaces it with another one. So that means you can't drag things from the dock to the home screen or you can, but you'll get another one. So basically what you have to do is go into the app drawer and then drag it from the dock up into the app drawer to get rid of it from the dock. It's it's just a weird process. It just takes away, it should have just been the same way stock Android is to be completely honest, the dock and that should be separate. And then there's another little quirk, uh, changing a wallpaper. You would think it would be just as easy as a long press on the wallpaper, just like stock Android, right? Wrong, you'll just find widgets there. 
Instead, you have to change the wallpaper by going and digging through the settings and finding the personalized setting and then picking a wallpaper from in there. So there's a whole bunch of weird quirks like that about HTC Sense 5 that HTC could either fix or just leave it there as a weird quirk. Otherwise though, using this phone has been a blast. The experience has been really, really nice. And like I said, it's quick enough that it makes up for pretty much all its shortcomings. I love how fast this phone is. There's nothing I would ever take away from the performance and the speed of this phone. Whatever it does, whether it's weird or not, it does it fast and I love that. That's probably my favorite thing about the HTC One. So that's basically it. And as you can probably tell, I am definitely a fan of this phone in a lot of ways. And a lot of people like to ask the question, you know, what is your next daily driver? Uh, and to be honest, I don't really have a daily driver. I do use different phones for different things. But honestly, this is probably a great choice for a phone for the next two or three years if you sign a contract with it. I would have no hesitation recommending this phone to literally anyone. That's how good this HTC One is. So there you go. Thanks for watching, guys. This has been a review. And if you enjoyed it, definitely feel free to give a thumbs up down below. And if you want to see more like it, there's also a subscribe button so you can do that too. Either way, yeah, thanks for watching. And I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Peace.